Welcome back. So as you know, we've discussed a number of different areas around raising capital for your startup, including the funding landscape and the capital pipeline, determining capital needs for your company based on burn rate, based on hypothesis testing, and based on um, the amount of run rate that we need. We've also talked about the nine points of how an investor thinks about approaching a company. We've talked about pitching uh, to an investor and building a deck around, uh, specifically around market size. We've talked about placing that market size within the context of what drives the returns for a venture firm. And we've talked about the basics of valuation being, you know, how much you think you need to raise based on an implied, um, based on burn rate, based on testing a hypothesis, based on 24 months of runway, how much money this uh, requires, and that divided by the amount of ownership that the venture firm is probably going to position for, um, leading to an implied valuation. And now we're going to talk about how we articulate valuation to investors. So as we've alluded to, there are these concepts of pre-money and post-money valuations. Um, as we've also talked about, you know, for an entrepreneur and for um, most companies pitching to investors, there isn't really a need to talk too much about valuation. What you should really focus on is how you're going to get to the next step of your of your investment. So how you're going to test a big idea, how you're going to test a hypothesis, what your burn rate is to get there, how long it's going to take, typically around 24 months, and what this implies for an amount of capital that you need to raise. Taking in, into account that the venture firm, in order to make their model work, will probably target something like 15 to 25% ownership. So based on the amount of money you're going to raise divided by the ownership target, there's going to be an implied valuation that's generally a, a ballpark figure uh, for, for all companies. So as we talk about valuation, as we think about this, let's think about pre-money and post-money. So pre-money, what this effectively means is this is the value of your business without the new infusion of capital or before that capital is deposited or wired into your bank account. Post money is what we've discussed in the last uh, in the last module. So this is the value of your business after the new investment is deposited in your bank account. So what this is, is the post money is equal to the pre money plus the new investment. So as we talked about before, if we had 24 months of runway and we needed to raise $5 million, and that was the amount of money we were pitching in, uh, investors to raise, um, and those investors were targeting a 20% ownership target, we would take that $5 million divided by the 20% to imply a $25 million post-money valuation. So if we think about the pre-money, the pre-money is basically just the post-money minus that $5 million investment. So in this case, the pre-money would be $20 million. So to determine the pre and the post, we're going to think about the capital being raised, the percentage ownership of the investor, typically something like 15 to 25% target, and we're going to think of the capital divided by that investor ownership as being equal to the post-money valuation, and then the post-money minus that capital as equal to the pre-money valuation. So pre-money basically meaning before that capital infusion happens. So how should we communicate valuation to our investors? The truth is, um, the best way to communicate this is to focus not on what you think your company is worth, but what the implications are by focusing on the things we've discussed, like hypothesis, runway, burn rate, and the amount of money that you're raising. The valuation will be implied based on these factors. So in practice, I think one of the best ways to frame valuation, if you are pitching to an investor as an entrepreneur, is to say something like, Hello, you know, we're testing X hypothesis. In order to test it, we need to have 24 months of runway. We believe that's going to give us ample time to be able to test this hypothesis that we want to, to do in order to reduce the risk of our business. Um, given our hiring plan and all the people that are amazing that we're going to bring onto our team, our expected burn rate is X amount per month. Therefore, you know, over 24 months or two years, um, in order to pay people for 24 months, um, given this burn rate, and given this runway that we need in order to you know, fi figure out if this hypothesis will work, we're raising X amount of capital. And based on that, you know, we're seeking fair terms and a partner who can really help us take this to the next level. I think saying something like that really gives you uh, the ability to remain objective. Um, you're not forcing evaluation on the investor, but you're providing all the necessary details to prove to them why you need to raise a specific amount of money 
and they're going to come to that with you know very even keel footing thinking about the ownership target that makes sense for their business and i think this is how you can arrive at truly fair um, terms with your investors and find yourself a great partner who can help you build to the next level so in truth this takes a lot of practice you know this is not something that you learn overnight but it's thinking about these various inputs like hypothesis like burn rate like runway um, all leading to an implied amount of capital that you need to raise in order to you know, test that next hypothesis, to reduce the risk in your business, to increase the valuation of your company, and to lower the cost of capital going forward. And ultimately, if you can do this, and if you can frame it in the right way, and you pitch the right part of the capital pipeline, it should be a piece of cake to go to that next step and raise, raise money for your business with your investors. So what you should expect is your investor is going to think about the proxies of value. They're going to think about your idea, your team, your market, your technology. They're going to think about all of those things in the context of their own business model. They're going to think about their limited partners, their thesis, how they approach the world, and the ownership target that makes that viable. And based on your capital ask divided by their ownership target, and based on that implied valuation, they're going to start doing their due diligence. They're going to Ask to you know talk to people on your team, talk to former advisors, talk to people that you might be hiring, look at other companies in the space, and they're going to decide basically whether or not they believe that that post money valuation makes sense or not. So in the case of the example that we've given, five million dollar Series A raise uh, and a twenty percent ownership target with an implied post money valuation of twenty five million, they're going to do their due diligence and think about the size of the opportunity, the market size, the way that you frame all of these problems. And they're going to think about, you know, does it make sense today for us to invest $5 million and say that this company is worth $25 million post money after our check is wired in? If that makes sense, the investment will go ahead. If it doesn't seem to make sense, there could be a negotiation on the terms of the deal, uh, on the term sheet. There could be negotiation around slight changes in the valuation, or maybe the venture firm owns slightly more. Maybe they put in more money to own more. Maybe... Um, they put in less money and simply want a lower valuation overall. But these are a number of the sort of different levers that are going to start impacting how this negotiation takes place. And ultimately, that's um, how you can think about valuation, how you should articulate it, uh, is not by addressing it head on, but by thinking about these underlying fundamental things like hypothesis, burn rate, runway, and the capital that you need to get to that next step. So thanks so much, and we'll see you soon.